Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode in a series of short videos on stylometry and the package stylo. The package stylo being a software, a piece of software dedicating for doing stylometric analysis. Uh, my name is Maciej and I work at the Institute of Polish Language at the Polish Academy of Sciences and one of the fields of my study is text analysis. Text analysis and specifically uh, stylometry or measuring differences, stylistic differences between texts. One of the most obvious applications of stylometry is authorship attribution. So the question if, given a text, you have no idea of the authorship, can you attribute this text to its author using the word frequencies only, so using just the properties of the texts themselves? And the package style, which I'm going to cover in this very short uh, episode, is aimed at doing such analysis. It is quite complex. It has lots of functions, lots of functionalities. I'm going to focus today on very basic introduction to it. And in the next episode, I will ask my colleagues, um, who are also uh, developers of the package style, um, I'm the main developer, but there's also another um, bunch of people involved in this in this package. So I will ask them to help me introduce you to uh, its other functionalities. Shall we start then? The package style is written in the programming language R, but you don't have to um, be literate in the programming language R itself. In order to use the package stylo, you first have to install it, but I hope you know how to do that. But first you have to launch the R shell. R shell, which is, um, I'll be using Macintosh, but the package style is available in Mac, in Windows, in Linux, you choose. So what I'm going to do right now, I can open a shell for R in Macintosh. I could also do it via terminal, such as here. I just launch R, it says something. It, it, it says a welcome note. It is actually up to you if you switch to this dedicated R shell or a general terminal from inside, from, from which you can uh, launch R. There is also a similar shell for Windows and Linux users are in the mercy of just black terminal, but I hope they will be fine anyway. So that's R, but before I go to R, before, before I even start, I'm just closing it up. Okay, so before you even start, you have to collect your texts. Did I forget to tell you that stylometry is about measuring texts properties? Well, so first of all, you need to have your texts to be scrutinized using stylometric techniques. In my case, I'll be showing you uh, the collection of English, epic English poems from the 17th, 18th and 19th century. So first thing I have to do, I just create a random, not really a random, a folder in my working directory, be it desktop. So I'm creating a folder on desktop. I can name it say poetry. And the name is up to you. What I do next, I open this folder and in this folder I create a subfolder named corpus. It doesn't need to be named corpus, lowercase, but it is really convenient to do so. Then you save lots of time and other uh, parameters. You, you don't have to use any additional parameters. This is the default setting. So we create a folder containing a subfolder named corpus lowercase. Then you go into this subfolder corpus and you put your texts in there. The texts should be, I've prepared a bunch of texts here. The text should be just raw text files. As in this case, just letters, you know, just no formatting, no anything else, just a text. And I've got a collection of like 20, 20 something of those texts. 
So I'm going to do right now, I'm just copy, copying the entire collection and pasting it into my Corpus subdirectory. So my entire setup looks like that. I've got a directory poetry containing a subdirectory corpus into which I put my texts. As simple as that. Okay, ready to shift gears. The next step is to launch R. I'm launching R. And then three simple steps follow. The first is I have to tell R that I will be using the package stylo. I say library stylo first. It takes a few seconds to activate it. It says some welcome notes. Now, the next step is quite hard. I admit that. What we have to do is we have to tell R where our corpus is. So we have to point it to the working directory poetry that I've just created. How to do so? There is a dedicated function in R to change working directory. It's set WD for set working directory. But now in the, in the, in the brackets, I have to tell where my corpus is, which might be a little bit challenging. I know it. I remember very well when I put my corpus, so it's in desktop and then poetry, right? That's it. I can hit enter. But I'm fully aware that most of you might feel a little, might feel a little bit lost here. So for the rest of us, there is a workaround. On Macintosh, you go to miscellaneous, misc, and then you click change, working directory, and you can choose your directory from, as in my case, desktop, poetry, right? Please make sure that you don't go inside the folder corpus. You have just to point to the folder containing the subfolder corpus open. It says something, but that's fine. So we are already there. There is a bunch of very useful comments to check if you are really there, but I, I just assume that we don't have to learn R from scratch right now. So that was the second step. The first was to load the library stylo. The second step was to set the working directory to make sure that R sees where our corpus is. And now the third step is Super simple. Just type stylo in the empty brackets. In the empty brackets, you can provide some additional arguments, but we don't do it for the time being. We just go the simple way. So what we do, we are ready to go. I'm hitting OK. I'm hitting Enter. See what happened? A nice graphical user interface popped up. By the way, package style was written by a couple of people. Jan Rybicki was the person who contributed the graphical user interface, which is super handy, which is super convenient and actually quite great. Uh, so what I can do right now, I can choose my parameters. Now, there is hundreds of different ways of defining your model. Uh, for the time being, I'm just going the easy way. So I, what I suggest to do is just to click the OK button. I click the OK button for the first time, which will perform an analysis with default settings. As you can see, something is going on here. Oh, something happened. Uh, as you can see, something is going on here, uh, starting with um, the procedure of loading the text one by one from the corpus. That's it. Then all those um, loaded texts were divided into tokens, particular words. Then those words were counted in order to get a frequency list. Then out of this frequency list, a table of frequencies uh, was built and then a procedure of measuring the uh, textual similarities uh, was applied. And that's the final results that we get. This final plot is referred to as a dendrogram. Dendrogram, so a tree-like structure, 
um, on which you can identify some branches, some leaves, and particular texts belonging to larger groups of similar uh, items, similar texts. This is not the only way of doing stylometry, but perhaps it is the easiest way to start. So as you can see, there are some groups of text. The colors are, by the way, attached according to the names of the files. So whatever um, goes followed by the first underscore is recognized as a different color to be assigned. So we've got a few uh, nice clusters appearing here, John Milton being uh, slightly detached from the two uh, remaining clusters. As I said, this is not the only way of doing this telemetric analysis, so let me show you a different way of doing it. If I type stylo again, I will simply redo my task from scratch. If I type stylo again, I've got my graphical user interface box again. And now, rather than keeping the default settings, I might go to, why not go into statistics? And I might choose multidimensional scaling rather than cluster analysis this time. I click OK. The same thing happens. But the final results are slightly different. The final uh, picture is a little bit different because now I've got a two-dimensional scatter plot showing a multi-dimensional scaling results. In this picture, you can also define some nice clusters. Actually, two of those two of those clusters are quite visible. Uh, John Milton being again slightly different stylistically. There is, of course, a reason for that, because Milton is a 17th century author, as opposed to the rest of the uh, text represented in this corpus, which is the 19th century epic poetry. So as you can see, uh, some temporal trace has been uh, recognized here by the system. Now, this is just the beginning of our long, long journey to come. There is several other options to be covered in this tutorial. There will, there will be more episodes to come, but for the time being, I hope this is enough to start. This is enough to give it a try. Uh, so I hope you will find uh, the package title useful and uh, I welcome to watch next episode. I, I hope you like that one and um, I hope to see you again quite soon. Thank you very much. Cheers.